Hello learners, welcome to NIOS. Today we are going to talk about Molecular Inheritance and Gene Expression Part 2. First, we will study about DNA replication. What is meant by DNA replication? It is a process by which DNA copies itself. How this replication takes place? There are different steps of replication. We can categorize them into first the DNA as we studied earlier that DNA is a double helical structure. When the replication of DNA has to take place, that helix is to be opened up and that is known as the unwinding of DNA double helix. The next step is the synthesis of the primer and the final step is the synthesis of new DNA strand. This DNA replication is semi-conservative in nature. What is meant by semi-conservative is that we know that DNA is made up of two strands that is clear to you now and those two strands are anti-parallel to each other. Semi-conservative means the one strand can be used as a template and based on using that template strand the complementary strand can be built up. So whenever the DNA replicates the cell receives half DNA which is the older one and the half newly synthesized. That is one strand of DNA which serves as a template is an old one and the one strand of DNA that is newly synthesized is the new one. So we say that DNA replication is semi-conservative in nature. Now first step that is the unwinding of DNA double helix. How does it takes place? It takes place with the help of an enzyme topoisomerase and helicase. These enzymes they bind at the replication fork. DNA can be, cannot be replicated at from any of the places. It can be replicated only at special origin of replication fork places. So at the replication fork the topoisomerase and helicase will bind to DNA and it will open up and makes a fork so that the synthesis of new strands can take place. The DNA polymerase enzyme cannot start the replication on its own. It needs a primer and that primer is 5 to 10 base pairs of RNA which is synthesized by the enzyme primase. The primase will synthesize the RNA and the DNA polymerase will keep on adding the nucleosides which are present in the cell. Uh, to that chain and ultimately the new strand of DNA is synthesized. As you can see here, the new strands, one is the leading strand and other are the Okazaki fragments. These are the new strands and they are always synthesized from 5 prime to 3 prime direction. 5 prime means the fifth position of the sugar and 3 prime is the third position of the sugar. The new nucleotide is always added at the third position of the sugar molecule. So the synthesis is from 5 prime to the 3 prime. One of the strand that is synthesized is continuous and that strand strand is known as the leading strand as we can see in the slide it's a continuous arrow 5 prime to 3 prime the newly synthesized strand that is a leading strand and the other strand which is synthesized in small small fragments you can see small small arrows on the slide and these are known as the okazaki fragments the synthesis of the second strand is not continuous and these Okazaki fragments are later on joined by ligase. Okay. Now once the new DNA has been formed, no new DNA uh, complementary strands have, have been formed, they, this DNA, the proofreading of this DNA goes on so that the genetic makeup of the organism does not change at all. And that proofreading is also done by another set of DNA polymerase enzyme. This was about the DNA replication. Now we will move on to the next topic that is the central dogma. What is meant by central dogma? Dogma means a truth. Central dogma is the transfer of information from gene to the site of protein synthesis. The site of gene in case of eukaryotes is a nucleus and that too on the chromosome. And the site of protein synthesis actually is the cytoplasm. Now, 
we know that the product of the gene is an enzyme or a protein. There are two steps which are involved in protein synthesis. The two steps are transcription and translation. Transcription means the formation of messenger RNA from the DNA. That is known as transcription. And translation is formation of proteins using messenger RNA in the cytoplasm. What happens in case of retroviruses when RNA is the genetic material? When RNA is the genetic material, which is there in case of retroviruses, HIV viruses, this RNA first, once that virus enters into the body of the cell, the RNA is changed to a DNA with the help of an enzyme reverse transcriptase and this is known as, this process is known as reverse transcription. Once it gets integrated into the DNA, then it will make the RNA and then the proteins. So, in case of retroviruses, there is an additional step that is first that RNA is changed into a DNA. Then only it will be able to utilize the machinery of the host. Before we move, move ahead, we must know what a genetic code is. Genetic code is the nucleotide based sequence on DNA which will be translated into the sequence of amino acids of the protein to be synthesized. The characteristic of genetic code is it is a triplet. So, we know that DNA contains the nucleotides and nucleotides are made up of bases. These nitrogenous bases, triplet is three nitrogen, nitrogenous bases, say adenine, guanine, cytosine. Okay? So, genetic code is a triplet. We have total four nitrogenous bases. So, the DNA can be transcribed into messenger RNA using the rule of complementarity. While the messenger RNA which is carrying the bases, there is no rule of complementarity between the bases and the amino acid. So, how this genetic information which is there in the form of bases translated into amino acid. For this they gave a genetic code and they said if we that the total four number of bases are there and uh, if we have a combination of two bases only then maximum eight genetic code are formed. But if these bases this genetic code code is a triplet then total 64 such permutation combinations are possible as we can see in the slide. This U stands for uracil, C for cytosine, A for adenine and G for guanine. And there are 64 such permutation combinations of bases are available if genetic code is a triplet. Then genetic code is unambiguous. Unambiguous means that suppose the code AUG which codes for a methionine, it will not code for any other amino acid. It will only code for a methionine. They are comma-less and non-overlapping. As I have written the base sequence A, U, A, T, A, G, C, C, C. So, it is comma-less. It means that A, U, A will code for one particular amino acid it is non overlapping like once AUA has been read then it will not read UAT but it will read the next one that is TAG. It will code for another amino acid and then the third codon that is CCC will code for the third set of amino acid. So, it is comma less and non overlapping. Now, what is meant by the next that is it is degenerate. Degenerate means that we have 64 such codons and the total number of amino acids which makes up the protein are only 20. So, we have much more number of codons than we have the number of any amino acids. So, for one particular amino acid more than one codon is available. As we can see here that UUA codes for leucine. UUG codes for leucine, CUU codes for leucine, CUC also codes for leucine, 
CuA codes for leucine and CuG also codes for leucine. So, for leucine only we have 6 codons which code for the same amino acid. So, this clearly indicates that the genetic code is degenerate. Now, this genetic code is read on the trans transcribed messenger RNA during protein synthesis. The sequence of the bases on the messenger RNA will ultimately determine which I mean what will be the sequence of amino acids in the protein. AUG is always the initiation codon and it codes for methionine. So, whenever the protein synthesis takes place the first codon that is to initiate the protein synthesis is always AUG. Then there are certain stop codons. How the D, uh, RNA comes to know that now the protein synthesis is to be stopped and this is the total number of amino acids which makes up this polypeptide. There are certain stop codons or we call them also as nonsense codons or the terminator codons. They are UAA, UAG and UGA. Then genetic code is universal and common almost for all organisms on earth. This means that if AUG is coding for methionine in case of plants, then AUG is going to code for methionine only in case of animals or in bacteria. So, this genetic code is universal and common for all the organisms on the earth. As I told you that there are two steps for protein synthesis, first is the transcription and next is translation. What happens in transcription? This is a slide which tells us how the transcription takes place in prokaryotes or the bacteria. There is a enzyme RNA polymerase that goes and binds to the promoter site on the DNA. We have seen in replication that topoisomerase and helicase they open up the DNA for replication, but here all the opening up of the DNA molecule is done by DNA polymerase only once it binds to the promoter region. Sigma fat factor as you can see in this slide helps in attaching the RNA to the promoter region. Once RNA polymerase has attached to the promoter region, the elongation of chain starts and the RNA molecule starts synthesizing. You can see the pink colored RNA molecule that is being formed. Then once the elongation it proceeds, ultimately when it encounters the nonsense or the stop codon, the RNA synthesis stops or terminates and uh, the rho factors attaches to the RNA polymerase and RNA polymerase is released from the DNA molecule. So, RNA has been formed and in the case of prokaryotes the translation also starts immediately along with transcription because in prokaryotes there is no nuclear membrane present and the chromosome is only as a nucleoid which is present in the cytosol only. So, transcription and translation they go side by side in case of prokaryotes while in the case of eukaryotes the mRNA that has been formed undergoes further processing. In this slide we can see that E represents the exons and the I represents the introns. The mRNA has been formed which carries the exons as well as the introns. Now what happens? The introns are removed. Introns are removed and the exons are joined together to form the messenger RNA which is active now, the processed messenger RNA which will ultimately result in the protein synthesis. Now after the removal of introns, the another step which, step which takes place in eukaryotes is addition of methyl guanosine at the 5 prime end of the messenger RNA and at the 3 prime end the 200 to 300 bases base long poly A tail that is poly 
adenosine or adenylate tail as is being added. So now once the capping and the tailing of messenger RNA is done, it moves out of the nucleus through these pores in the nuclear membrane into the cytosol for the process of translation. Translation is being done by the RNAs. The first RNA we have already covered that is the messenger RNA, how it is formed using DNA as the template. Then the transfer RNA and the ribosomal RNA are in the cytoplasm. Now messenger RNA after being transcribed has moved into the cytoplasm but tRNA and the ribosomal RNA are already present in the cytoplasm only. The transfer RNA has a clover leaf like structure the green colored one as you can see. At the bottom of it the anticodons are present which are complementary to the codons which are present on the messenger RNA and on the other side the top end as we can see of the transfer RNA the amino acid is attached. So for every amino acid there is a different transfer RNA. Then ribosomal RNA is made up of proteins and the RNA. Lot many proteins and the RNA together will make up the ribosomal RNA. What are the various steps of translation? First is the activation of amino acid, then formation of messenger RNA ribosome complex and chain initiation, chain elongation and chain termination. In amino acid activation, amino acid combines with the ATP molecule. You know that ATP is the energy currency of the cell. In the presence of enzyme amino acyl tRNA synthetase, amino acid and AMP complex is formed and pyrophosphate is released. This amino acid AMP joins with DNA and forms an amino acid which is attached to the transfer RNA and adenosine monophosphate is ultimately released. So this is known as the activation of amino acid. Now next is after this attachment. Now this as I told you that on an mRNA AUG is the initiator codon. Ribosomes are made up of two subunits the smaller subunit and the bigger subunit. The brown colored structure which is present beneath the messenger RNA is the smaller subunit of the ribosome and the brown colored structure present over the messenger RNA is the larger subunit of ribosomal RNA. First the smaller subunit attaches to the messenger RNA and then the larger subunit will attach to the messenger RNA. This larger subunit has basically we can say the two pockets on which the first tRNA that is uh, methionine carrying the methionine amino acid with which pairs with AUG and has a codon UAC will come and attach. In the second pocket the next amino acid will come as we can see next tRNA will come in the second part of the slide. Now the two amino acids are very close to each other you can see in the slide the methionine and the phenylalanine. Now they are close enough that the peptide bond is formed between them and that is how the chain keeps on extending. In the third slide in next slide we can see that the methionine has attached to phenylalanine and now the ribosome slides over the messenger RNA and the one pocket of that larger subunit is made free for the movement of the next uh, tRNA and that is how the chain keeps on elongating and adding the more amino acid to a polynucleotide chain which is being synthesized. What is a polysome assembly? several ribosomes they can translate the messenger RNA at the same time. It is not that the on the messenger RNA the first ribosome will atta uh, attach and one polypeptide chain is synthesized once it synthesizes the next ribosome comes and synthesizes the next chain it is not like that. Several ribosomes can translate messenger RNA at the same time and it is called a polysome. The result this results in the production of many polypeptide copies from a single messenger RNA. The chain is terminated when the 
a set of three adjacent bases in the DNA or their complementary bases in messenger RNA that specifies the end of a polypeptide chain. The three chain terminator codon that we studied earlier that are UAA, UAG and UGA, they are also called the termination codon. They stop or stop codons or the nonsense codons, they will help in the termination of the chain because they do not code for any amino acid. So, the polypeptide chain is complete once they encounter the nonsense codons. Now that how the proteins are being made in a cell. Once the proteins are made, all the proteins are not required all the time in the cell. So, how this regulation of gene expression takes place in a cell? We can categorize genes into different types. One are the housekeeping genes. Such genes which are expressed all the time in all cells are termed as the housekeeping genes. Then there are certain inducible genes. What inducible genes are? Inducible genes are the genes which are switched on when a particular substrate is present. Then the third category is the repressible genes. The repressible genes are those which are shut off in the presence of a sub sub specific substrate in the cell. To understand the inducible gene, we will study the lac operon. Jacob and Monod, they received a Nobel Prize for their work on the breakdown of lactose in E. coli. What is lactose? Lactose is a sugar which is made up of glucose and galactose. Whatever we eat, the energy is released once it is broken down into the glucose level. Same way the lactose, once if E. coli is using lactose as a energy source, it is to be broken down into glucose and galactose. In the absence of a substrate, what happens? On the DNA, there are enzymes I. I represents the regulator protein. It will synthesize a regulator protein. P is a promoter gene. O is an operator and Z, Y, A are the structural genes. I synthesizes a regulator protein which will go and bind to the operator when lactose is not present in a medium. Once the regulator protein goes and binds to the operator gene, the RNA polymerase cannot come and bind to the promoter gene and the transcription of the structural genes will not take place. So, in the absence of lactose, the regulator protein binds to the operator gene and it will not let RNA polymerase bind to promoter gene for the transcription of the three genes Z, Y, A which are the structural genes. And in the presence of lactose, this regulator protein which is synthesized by the I gene will attach to the lactose. Once it binds to the lactose, now it is not free and it cannot go and bind to the operator region. Once the operator is feel free, the RNA polymerase can bind to promoter that is represented as P. Okay? RNA polymerase will bind to the promoter and the transcription of Z, Y and A gene takes place. Z produces beta galactosidase enzyme, Y produces permease and A produces transacetylase. All these three enzymes work together in the uptake of lactose into the cell and also helps in the metabolism of lactose into glucose and galactose. So, that is how the control of gene expression takes place in case of the inducible lac operon in E. coli. Now, we will move on to the next topic that is mutation. What is mutation? Mutation is a heritable change in the structure, content or organization of the genetic material. What is meant by structure and content is? Now, it is very clear to you that DNA is made up of bases and ultimately these bases will tell what will be the structure of a polypeptide chain that is formed. And if there is a change in the sequence of these bases, it will ultimately result in the changed structure of the polypeptide or we can say 
either the abnormal or no protein will be formed. So, the mutations can be categorized into two types the point mutation or the chromosomal mutation. What are point mutations? Point mutations which occur in one gene say if only one uh, base pair has been changed. So, that is a point mutation and in chromosomal mutation which affects number of genes on a chromosome say a part of a chromosome has been lost. So, that will be a chromosomal mutation. What are the different types of chromosomal mutation that can be a deletion when a piece of chromosome is lost. As we can see here I have represented it as gene A, B, C, D. In the second set you can see that first two genes are present but the 3 and 4 are not present. So, it means a lot I have represented it with two genes only, but most of the times it is much more than two genes which are lost when the deletion takes place. Then inversion, inversion is the part of a chromosome breaks up and rejoins in an inverted position. The gene A, B, C, D, A, B are in the right orientation, but instead of C, D, now their sequence has been changed, has been changed to D, C. It is not that the gene changes, it is maybe the chromosome has uh, inverted in such a way, maybe the part of gene, it is not the complete gene has that has been reverted, but maybe only a part of gene has been reverted. Now, duplication is when the gene makes it, uh, when a part of a chromosome may get represented twice. Here I have shown it as A, B, C, D and in the second arrow you can see it is A, B, C, D, C, D. So, it has resulted in a duplication of the part of the chromosome. And the fourth type of chromosomal mutation are the translocation. When the part of chromosome moves to another location or to another chromosome. So, the four types of chromosomal mutations are deletion, inversion, duplication and translocation. Now, coming to the point mutation. Point mutation first is the transition. Transition means when purine has been replaced by another purine. We know that guanine and adenine are purines. Here I am I have drawn the structure uh, base sequence of a DNA because in the RNA thymine is not there. Okay? So, it is a base sequence of a DNA. In a DNA ATT GAC, but when it gets mutated A has been changed to guanine that is G red colored that is the mutation that is transition when purine adenine is a purine and guanine is also a purine. So, instead of adenine in the mutated ones the gu gu uh, guanine is present then transversion. Transversion is when purine is replaced by a pyrimidine as you can see A is a purine adenine and it has been replaced by a pyrimidine that is T thymine. Frame shift mutation is when one additional base has been added into the DNA molecule. You can see ATT GAC is the sequence and the mutated version is ATT and additional A has been added. Now, when the genetic code is read, it will be read as ATT and then AGA instead of the normal one GAC. Okay? So, that is the frame shift mutation because the reading frame has been changed now. What are missense sense mutations? When a change in genetic code due to change in the nucleotide. So, the GAG codes for a glutamic acid. Instead of GAG, if it becomes GTG, GTG will code for a valine. So, that was a missense mutation something else has been formed in a polypeptide chain instead of glutamic acid now valine will be added. So, which will not be a normal structure of the polypeptide. In nonsense mutation there is a change in the code that it becomes a nonsense codon. Now, here I am talking about I have taken an example of a messenger RNA because U is a part of a messenger RNA uracil GAA 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 has been changed to GAA UAA and you know that UAA 
is a termination codon. So, the chain, the polypeptide chain will stop synthesizing and a proper protein will not be synthesized. Then now last type of mutation are the silent mutation. A change in a codon is there, but the, they code for the same amino acid. We know that genetic code is degenerate and example here is UGU if it gets changed to UGC both of them they code for the cysteine. So, the effect will not be there on the structure of the polypeptide chain. So, thank you. I hope you got an insight into the gene expression and the DNA structure and it will help you in understanding this topic well. This, this presentation will help you in understanding this topic well. Thank you.